those of our nation who have given their life in our country's service. We're mindful too of veterans and those who are presently serving in the United States military and the sacrifices that they and their families make. We're mindful too of those who, while not losing their life in the service of our country, have injury and wounds that are visible. And we think also of those who have wounds and injury who are not visible. We're delighted today to have Terry Jackson singing in our devotional video. Terry will be singing again next weekend in our video. Terry's song today is in commemoration of Memorial Day. They were startled and terrified 
and thought that they were seeing the ghost, he said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Leslie Flynn tells of a small boy who was being raised in a remote town by his grandmother. During one night, their house caught on fire. The, mother, the grandmother in the upstairs bedroom did all that she could to rescue the boy. But she was overcome by the smoke and regrettably perished in the fire. In this remote town, there was not much of a fire department. The whole second floor was engulfed with flames as people had gathered around the house they began hearing a, this small boy cry out for help from the second floor window. People didn't know what to do. Suddenly a man pushed through the crowd and climbed up an iron drainage pipe that ran up to the roof. The pipe was hot from the fire, but the man made his way up the pipe to a second floor window. He crawled through the window and located the boy with the crowd enthusiastically cheering him on and with the boy on his back and with the boy's hands around his neck. This man climbed back down that hot pipe and rescued the boy. Some weeks later, a public meeting was held to determine custody of the boy. The presiding officer asked if there was someone there who wanted to speak first. A person stood up and said, I am a farmer. I can give the boy a good home. He can learn how to farm or he can learn a farm-related trade. A second person stood up, a woman, who said, I am a school teacher, and I can see that he receives a good education. A third person stood and said, I am a businessman. My wife and I can provide for the boy a fine home and a very good education. We'd like for him to live with us. The presiding officer asked if there was anyone else who would like to speak. Well, from the back row, a man stood and he began to speak. I cannot provide as well as these others can, but what I can give this boy is love. And he slowly pulled his hands from his coat pockets and revealed them to those who had gathered there. Those sitting around him and those who could see gasped at how badly scarred were his hands. This was the man who had rescued the boy. The boy saw him and recognized him and jumped to his feet and ran to his waiting arms. Well, the farmer, the school teacher, and the businessman all sat down. They knew in their mind and heart what decision would be made. This man had already proven how dedicated he was to this boy and how much he loved it. It was revealed in his sacrifice on behalf of the boy. It was revealed in his hands. 
Luke tells us that when those early disciples were gathered together talking about issues related to the risen Christ, that Jesus appeared in their midst. They were startled, terrified, many in their amazement and joy doubted. And Luke tells us that Jesus said to them and showed them His hands. His hands. They had recognized and seen His hands before. They had seen His hands when He had first beckoned them to come and to follow Him. They had seen His hands when He placed them on the eyes of blind people and restored their sight. They had seen His hands lift disabled people from the ground and raise them up. They had seen His hands as He took bread and broke it and shared it. They had seen His hands as He washed their feet. They recognized Him by His hands. Fanny Crosby in one of her hymns wrote, I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in His hand. A poet, thinking about the hands of Jesus, wrote, They nailed those beautiful, blessed hands to the cruel, bitter cross, and there in agony untold, He bore our shame and loss. Beautiful hands of Jesus, I hope someday to see those wonderful, loving, nail-scarred hands that were pierced on Calvary. We're aware of how Jesus used His hands. What can we presently do with our hands? Well, one thing we can do is we can wring our hands in anxiety and fear. We can fold our hands with disconcern in an impassive, uncommitted way. Hand folders insulate themselves from the needs and the concerns of others. Thirdly, we can wash our hands. And we do need to wash our hands literally, but we don't need to wash our hands, figuratively speaking, of our responsibilities that are ongoing to the life of our church and the well-being of our church. Fourthly, we can lift our hands to God in worship, in praise, in thanksgiving, and in prayer. And we can open our hands to God to receive of His Spirit and His grace. And lastly, we can outstretch our hands. Outstretch our hands as we pray for others for whom we are concerned. We may not be able to reach out literally and physically and touch others, but we can reach out to others with our thoughts, our hearts, and our contacts to people for whom we are concerned, people in our church family. The way that Christ used His hands and the touch of the hands of Christ upon us can change the way we think about our hands and how we use our hands. Hands which could be used for taking can now be used for giving. 
hands that could be used for hoarding can become hands that are used for sharing. Hands that could be used to hold others down can be used in the name and spirit of Christ to lift people up. Recently, I read of a pastor who told of a young woman who was a live-in caregiver for a wealthy family. Her job in that household was to give care to a woman, a family member, who was disabled. This woman, in a full-time way, provided all sorts of care and cleaning and support and love for this woman. This woman, this caregiver, was a devout Christian and she was concerned that her responsibilities in that household more often than not kept her from participating in the worship, the fellowship, and the service and ministries of her church. This woman herself became ill with life-threatening sickness from which she would not recover. Her pastor came and visited with her and they talked about her illness and her faith and she expressed her concern to her pastor saying, I just feel so badly that I have not been able to participate in the life of the church the way that I want to and would love to do so. She said, I don't even know if Jesus, when He sees me, will know my name. Well, the pastor in great care and compassion for her said to her tenderly and caringly, when you see the Lord, just show Him your hands. Those hands of yours that have given so much care and attention and love to that family member. Just show the Lord your hands. He knows. He knows what your hands have done on her behalf. And He will recognize you and know you by your hands. It's a good question for us to ask ourselves today. How shall we use our hands? And I wonder if Christ one day will ask us to show Him our hands.